Hey, hey there, it's me. Hey everybody, I'll be your meadow hare for the day. And let's do some slopes. Holy cow. Finally, slopes. I know many of you have been waiting for this tutorial for, what, a year? Probably about that. Wow, that's embarrassing. But you know what? Darn it, I'm finally going to do it. Just for you guys. So let's look at what we got here. Let's get right into it. We got our old tutorial frame from when I was doing the platformer tutorial. We have Eric, we have the detector, we have the collider, nothing's really changed. The code is all exactly the same, just the basic engine. This is an old version of it. And, okay, so first thing, let's just start changing things right away here. Oh, also, you need to make these, just slopes. I just took the straight line object, just drew across, and just filled it in. That's how I made this. And the same thing here, I just made it twice as long as it was wide. <laughs> twice as long as it was wide. Twice as wide as it was tall, and just did the same thing. Alright, so, start changing stuff. Make Eric invisible, not visible at start, uncheck that, and make his, the collider and the detector visible. And let's just run it and see how it works. Okay, so here we are, where this guy, the collider, we can jump, we can walk, but we cannot walk up slopes. You just kind of crash right into the side there. Even if you're up here, you cannot go up them. You can only go down, but you kind of bump your way down. doesn't look that great. So let's fix that, shall we? Shall we? Yes, we shall. Okay, first change. Take this, clone it. It'll just be called Detective 2, that's okay, just leave the name. You can re rename it if you want, but you don't have to. We're going to go in here to the size, it was 24 by 24, uncheck stretch. 24 by 24, but I'm going to change the height to 27, just hit apply. And it'll add these three pixels below your original line. Just fill that in with any color, change this color a little bit to differentiate between the first detective and this one. Any color will do. Just leave it there. And we'll go in here, into the events, here's your first change. Go all the way down to the bottom of the horizontal movement, and you have an always thing here. On mine it's event number 29, on yours it might be something different. Go over here. And you see that the first detective and Eric are set to this thing, to be right over it. Just copy over one of these, and just set it right here below your detective 2. And you can move this over here if you want. And there you go. So let's run it again. And you should have a little blue thing following under you. Good. Give yourself a pat on the back if you've gotten this far. We're well on our way to having functional slopes. Next event, our next change, is we're going to go right in here and add a group, and we're just going to call it Slopes. Alright, and let's add an event. Do a loop. On loop, well, let me walk you through a little better. Go under Special, double click or right click, go down to the bottom on loop. We're going to type in the familiar Horiz. On loop Horiz, that's all you need. Go in here to under special again, and just do fast loop start loop slopes. Oops, make that capital O just for consistency's sake. So we're going to start it four times. Just type in four, hit OK. And right now that's not going to do anything until we do on loop slopes when this guy, your collider, is overlapping a backdrop. Just add that in. What this is going to do, let me zoom way in here, just for the sake of this. Okay, so let's say uh, 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 each horizontal loop you're moving one pixel, alright? They're coming up to this slope, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Boom. The next loop that runs is going to say, okay, I ran loop horrors, I'm going to run, run loop slopes four times. What do you want to happen on loop slopes? Remember, boom. So, let's try this. When you're overlapping an object, which I am, isn't this cool? I bet you never thought I'd zoom in and all this. Holy cow. 
they're clearly overlapping that backdrop. So what happens? We want him to move up. So let's say set his position to his own y position minus 1. Now there's a problem here. If we just do this, let's run it and see what happens. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? To be honest, I don't know. Because he's not really overlapping an object. You know why? Because let's test this again. Alright, so we're running loop horrors. Uh, 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 horrors, 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 horrors. On loop horrors, when you're overlapping an object, set him back one. Boo. That's what happens. Because up here, when you're not overlapping a backdrop, it'll move you accordingly. When you are, it'll move you back and stop the loop. So we need to set this under slopes so that this will happen before this. You don't want this loop to stop before the slope loop runs. So now let's see what happens. Holy cow! I went up the slope! Alright, but there's another problem. When you run into that, you just start bouncing. You know why? It thinks you're running into a slope. Let's fix that. Let's go under here, say on loop slopes. Now this is really kind of complicated, but I'm going to try to explain it. Let's go in here and do... Oh, well this is the complicated part. Special, do compare two general values. Let me check out the time here. Alright, making good time. Compare two general values. The first thing, let's go retrieve data from object. Click that. Do special again. And then do fast loops get loop index and type in slopes and of course make the S capital or else it won't work. We're going to say when it's equal to 3. So when loop index of slopes is equal to 3, something happens. Now this is where the complication comes in. So each time you run into this, it says, okay, you collided with that backdrop. I'm going to run sloop. Run sloop. Oh boy, run loop slopes four times. Boom, 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 boom. It ran it four times, and it moved me up four times. That won't happen unless you're actually running into something that's more than four pixels tall. Right here, it'll just move it up one. And now I'm not overlapping a backdrop anymore, so it probably won't run it again. Or nothing will happen when it runs it. But, what happens when I run into a wall? Say I'm coming up to this wall. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, hey, look, you're over overlapping an object. Let's, uh, let's uh, run that loop. Slopes. One, two, three, four. What the? You're still overlapping an object. Let me run that loop again. One, two, three, four. Hey, you're still overlapping that object again. Let me run that loop again. One, two, three, four. And that just keeps happening. And the only reason you go down is because gravity pulls you down. So we got to make it so that... If you run over this object and it moves you up four, and you're still overlapping that object, it'll just say, oh, you know what, forget it, cancel that, let's just move back to that place. This is what this does. The way a loop works is it runs it four times from zero through three. So zero, one, two, three is the four times. So on the fourth loop, on number three, it's going to say, if you're still overlapping that object, let me just set you to your y position plus 4. Let's just forget that loop ever happened, alright? Now let's see what happens. Holy cow! You know what? That's a problem. I messed something up. What did I mess up? Well, let's see. Whenever you move now... Huh. You're going down into the floor. Why is that? Well because the loop's not being stopped. It's saying, okay, let me run that loop, but it's not stopping it if you're not overlapping an object. So let's add that in on loop slopes. When you're not overlapping a backdrop, stop loop slopes so that you don't sink into the floor. Boy, this is complicated. All right, so with that in mind, now it'll stop the loop if you're not overlapping something. Ta-da! You can crash right into this wall and you won't go up, but if you go up these, you will go up. Still got a problem though. When you're going down a slope, you still kind of bounce down it. It doesn't look very good. This is especially evident if I did this, if I extended this up a little bit. Oops. Whoa, that's not right. If I ran 
and this, then you'd really be able to see that you just kind of, yeah, you just bounce down the slope. Now that's not good. How do we make it so that when you're going down the slope, it pulls you down, but not when you're standing on the ground? One more event. We're almost done, actually. So on loop slopes, when this is not overlapping a backdrop, meaning your collider is not on the ground, or is not being pulled down into the ground, you know what I mean, when you're not colliding with a backdrop. When he is not, but when this new collider is overlapping a backdrop, we're going to set your Y position to your Y position plus one. So what that means is you're going along and you have this thing, alright? So you're coming down over the slope and you're like da 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 okay, I'm going over this thing. Boom, okay, let's check it out. Whoops. He is not overlapping a backdrop, but you know what? This thing is. So you know what's going to happen there. This thing's overlapping the backdrop. He isn't. It's going to pull him down one. That's what the whole point of this is. Alright, so let's try it. Oh no! Something else bad happened. It's pulling him down into the floor again. Why is that? Well, it's another order issue. See, this is running after you're on the ground with gravity. Gravity makes it so you hit the ground, then you go back out of the ground. So it's saying, oh, you're not in the ground, I'm going to pull you down one. Well, let's run this right up here. This way, it's before the horizontal. I'm sorry, when I was saying gravity, I really meant horizontal. Like, the horizontal keeps you above the ground and all that. Or something, I don't know. All I know is that the order matters, so let's just change it. And voila. You can go up slopes, you can go down slopes without bouncing down them. You can run into a wall, you won't go up the wall. Uh-oh. I lied when I said we only had one more thing to do. See how you just kind of clip right onto the top of that? You might not want that to happen, because it just makes it look awkward. See, you're jumping, and then you just stop. Jumping to stop. I don't know, it doesn't look that good to me. So let's just fix that. This is actually really easy to fix. You go in here, add one more frame. On that frame, make the height back to 24. Go in here and change the speed to zero and just click loop. Alright? Speed zero, two frames, second frame is this. And let's go in here. Oh, wow, excuse me, just burped. So, let's just make it so whenever your gravity is greater than zero, when you're falling basically, change this animation frame to zero, which is the default one, and use that for both of these. Whenever you're jumping up, when you're moving upward, change the animation frame to 1 when it's less than 0, and that'll just fix it. It's not really that important that you understand this part. Basically, when you're going upward, the little detector that clips you onto the ground retracts, and it goes back out when you're falling. Which means you can still go down slope, but if you jump and stuff, it won't clip you on if you don't want to. So, there you go. There you go, guys. You can go up slopes and down slopes now. It took a long time to do that tutorial, but hey, now you know. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I explained everything correctly. If you have any questions, tell me in the comments. I have not been good about answering comments, and I apologize for this. I realize that I've been really lazy, but I'm finally getting back my motivation. So I will try to answer you if you have questions. If not, somebody else who's more experienced will probably answer you. But yeah, sorry this took so long to get out, and also the video's pretty long itself. Holy cow. 12 minutes? No, 13 minutes. Oh well. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Look for more videos soon. I will be trying to do an enemy AI tutorial. Basic enemy AI. Don't expect anything crazy. Just jumping, chasing, that kind of thing. But yeah, I've been your Meadowhair for the day, and thank you for choosing me as your one and only Meadowhair. I will see you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.